We got some very big leaks in the week after Summer Game Fest. I also played some games while I was in LA, including LEGO Horizon. So I want to share my impressions right here. Talk about way more gaming news, so let's go. Xbox really pulled it off. They had an old school E3 style presentation with banger after banger. Fable was the highlight for me, just that shot of you exploring the city looks amazing and the character models were like talking to them. Really, really good. And we learned that Eidos Montreal, the studio who most recently did the Guardians of the Galaxy game, is actually helping Playground Games make a fable, which is interesting and might be why the humorous tone is really hitting. It's pretty interesting because we of course also know that Crystal Dynamics is helping the initiative make Perfect Dark, which looked really, really good as well. So both like X Square Enix now Embracer Group Studios are helping Microsoft make their AAA games. Going back to Fable though, because I do find it weird that we still have not seen more than 10 seconds of uninterrupted combat gameplay for a title that should be out in 2025. Like all they showed was like an ability, a finishing move, and a really cool move where you grab the arrow and throw it back to the target. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I thought it was interesting that, for example, for another 2025 similar type of game, South of Midnight, we did see a nice chunk of gameplay, like you can see what it will be like to actually play the game. They were not afraid to show many aspects, including the maybe a bit clunky combat. Overall though, I think it looks very promising. Love the art style and I just can't wait to explore this world. Now Tom Warren from The Verge now notes that Microsoft is currently targeting Fable to release between October and December 2025. Would of course be a huge banger for the end of the year. Although after this trailer, I think 2025 is still ambitious, would love to have it like early 2026, also because do you really want to launch this game or any other game around GTA 6? Like there are going to be many victims looking at how stacked 2025 will be with now even more games announced for that year. Adam Fall, the new game from the Sniper Elite people, Doom the Dark Ages of course looked incredible. Like watching this trailer you immediately understand how this is going to play and the new tools and weapons and even sort of vehicles looked really great. I say vehicles, I of course mean the dragon, the mech, you know what I mean. I was also really intrigued by Expedition 33, another 2025 game. The world looked incredible and I don't mind the turn-based combat if there are some necessary depths. Seems like it will use some Mario RPG elements, which is pretty cool. And good to note, while they were shown at the Xbox showcase, these three titles I just mentioned are also coming to PS5 and we learned this week also that Sony has multiple games from first party teams scheduled for 2025 so this next to Death Stranding 2 and we now also learned that moving forward the plan is to have at least one tentpole single player launch during the holiday season so this is a guaranteed 10 million seller like a God of War Spider-Man 2 or Horizon game. We already know that this year they won't have that so this tactic will start next year although they will of course have Astro Bot and the LEGO Horizon game. Again, I played them. I will share my impressions in a moment. But yeah, next year it has to be Ghost of Tsushima 2, right? You would think. With Marathon from Bungie and Fair Games likely also planned for 2025. So, just like Xbox, PlayStation also seems to have a big year for their platform. And Nintendo is also planning to launch the Switch 2 next year. Like, it's going to be wild. And let's not forget the third parties. We already know about Monster Hunter Wild, Crimson Desert, and also Marvel 1933 Rise of Hydra should be launching in 2025. Judas likely as well. And now we have a pretty wild leak from Mike Bodie, an actor who basically leaked a ton of games on his resume, including when they come out. People on Reddit found this, he already has removed the whole video game section from his resume but thanks to the Wayback Machine we can still look at the page before it was changed and oh doctor. So first of all he says that these games are still under NDA but then still goes on to list the short name for those games, the developer and what he's doing in that game making it very easy to see what the titles are. AC8 is Ace Combat 8 from Bandai Namco. It should be out in 2025. We see as the third one, Clockwork Revolution, as we see in Exile as the developer. 
I don't know if I buy the 2025 date because it was absent from the Xbox show, but I'm looking forward to it for sure. To give this league more credible, F4 from Playground Games, of course Fable 4 is listed for 2025, he will be playing a Thug and a Barman. Then we have OAHU from Gearbox, he will be playing a Mountain Gun Toter and a Shatterlands Male. Again, it's Gearbox, this has to be Borderlands 4, Shadowlands probably one of the regions in the game, and 2025 I think makes sense, as we recently learned from Kotaku that they were trying to get this Borderlands 3 follow-up across the finish line. So yes, that's another major 2025 game, and Randy actually took it to Twitter this week to ask if we would, assuming such a thing is separate from and in no way imposes on a numbered sequel campaign style Borderlands game, like that is good to know. He's asking, would we be interested in a Borderlands MMO, truly live service kind of game? With yes and no being close and more people saying probably than maybe. I think it would make sense for them to try some sort of Destiny model for the Borderlands franchise. Borderlands 3 already had pretty good free post-launch plans and a DLC. And I can see them expand on that. But yeah, this basically confirms that Borderlands 4 is not that type of game. That that will still be the campaign and co-op action that we love from the series without turning it into a service game. Which they could have totally done. So I'm happy to hear that they stick to what they know works. But yeah, overall them exploring a more live service approach as like a separate title I think only makes sense. Especially now that Take-Two fully owns Gearbox and so wants to invest even more in the Borderlands franchise. Going back to that actor though, DA2 from Supermassive seems to be the new Dark Pictures anthology game also coming in 2025. They kind of took a break, but will be back it seems. And I think those are the most interesting ones as the GT one that is listed here is likely for Game of Thrones, a mobile game where this actor will play, among other things, a Winterfell Guardsman. You can't make it more obvious than that. We also had an Epic Game Store database leak. Reddit did a great job of listing all the games that were found, but these are code names, so it's really harder to guess what they are, and some are for older games. Utah from Sony is interesting though. This seems to be The Lost of Us Part 2, so for PC, and we recently heard that it has already been ready for seven months at least. They likely want to get it out around the second season when there's more hype around the franchise, and of course, they should take the extra time to avoid the issues that the first game had on PC. If there are more finds from the Epic Game Store leak, I will of course let you know here. Yes, now I want to talk about LEGO Horizon. I played it and another game I played during Summer Game Fest and some other gaming news topics as well. Of course, if you like the video so far, leaving a like would really help me out and subscribe because I post one of these gaming news round of videos every Sunday. So Sony invited me at Summer Game Fest to play LEGO Horizon and Astro Bot. Let's start with the latter. Like this is going to be an insanely good game. I can already tell from the half an hour I played. I did five levels on one planet but they were all completely different with brand new mechanics and power-ups like where you would become a balloon to float around in the air or in water. You could also get a dock that gave you a dash for platforming and to use against enemies. And during the octopus boss fight I had these extended arms kind of from the arms switch game and it was just really fun to fight this boss like everything I played was really varied the goal in every level next to reaching the end is to try and collect other Astro bots including ones inspired by other Sony franchises like Ratchet and Prepper the Rapper and I always missed a few so that's of course a nice replayability that you can go back and get the ones that you missed the first time around now the first three levels including the boss fight were kind of easy but after that I had to do some challenging levels where you had to beat it without dying but if you did get hit you had to start all over so it was pretty satisfying when you finally beat it and I have to mention the DualSense features because just like in Astro's Playroom these are insane in Astro Bot and taken to the next level you really feel it when you hit the gloss I was like how do I feel it I'm just holding a controller basically every action you do just feels really good I mean I was already looking forward to the full release but this is gonna be better than I expected so of course drop your questions in the comments if you have any also for LEGO Horizon of course. Like again, I also played this, we sadly do not have any b-roll of it so you just see the trailer, but this was also a really fun experience. For one, because they're retelling the Zero Dawn story in a completely different way. 
Rust now gives you the focus, for example, and other characters will get the focus in Zero Dawn as well. There's no young Aloy part, like basically the opening levels are different. Like Aloy, of course, had to do a test in Zero Dawn, but in this game, the elders from the Nora tribe are captured by the Eclipse, so you have to save them. Tirsa is a lovely old lady now instead of a pain in the ass and there's a lot of Lego humor of course to give this a way lighter tone. The gameplay is also way simpler as expected from the Lego games. You got your ranged attacks that you can now hold to make it stronger. But they did add some fun horizon mechanics as well like fire arrows. All the Zero Dawn machines should be in this game and have some familiar moves. And you can still kind of get that hunter feel by having to approach them in tall grass. And the special attacks in particular were kind of surprising to change things up. You also saw them in the trailer. There's even a hot dog guy stance that you can summon. And then the hot dog guy will like throw hot dogs to nearby enemies and deal damage. I was especially impressed by the customization that we have a screenshot of on PS5. Like you can wear a ton of familiar outfits from Zero Dawn but also armors from familiar Zero Dawn characters and even famous Lego sets. Like I don't want them in my Horizon game but you can get crazy if you want. Another cool part is that Mother's Heart is your home base in this game that you go to in between missions. The missions are pretty linear by the way but they do have some like branching paths and this home base grows over time with new buildings and features. You can tweak and like build things in the home base. Other Horizon characters can walk around here. I don't think it's going to be fun to play through this alone or in two player co-op. There's online co-op and couch co-op. It could get annoying if you would like get too far from each other then the second player would spawn close to the first player and this could even happen in boss arenas because they could get pretty large. So that was quite annoying but apart from that I had a really good time. I'm curious what the price point will be as it's seemingly only seven to eight hours to finish the main campaign. I'll of course keep you posted here. I was also in LA for Ubisoft Ford to see and get exclusive info on Assassin's Creed Shadows thanks to interviews, of course more videos on that very soon and I also played the Star Wars Outlaws so expect my impressions soon on the channel as well. But during the Ubisoft Ford stream they also announced some interesting things that I haven't touched on yet. For one the first Avatar DLC is coming on July 16th and will continue the main story of the game and also add more character progression, a new legendary rarity for items and new ways to spend skill points. And this should come in handy against the new RDA enemies we have to fight next to the challenges that we have to do during the great games festivities. The Prince of Persia The Lost Crown DLC is dropping in September and they also announced the release year for the Sense of Time remake. Like they're completely redoing it after the poor reveal. 2026 is when we can expect it but apart from that the trailer showed nothing. Like at least teasing I think what it will look like would have been a good thing. Now you're basically saying hey it's coming later than maybe we all expected but okay. Again more videos with info on Assassin's Creed Shadows and my impressions after playing Star Wars Outlaws this coming week. On June 18th there's going to be a Spider-Man 2 update that finally had suits that were made by Kid Super in collab with Finney Jr, Lando Norris and Arena Sawayama. I think they look better in game than the sort of teases we got. They also are bringing back suits from the previous games which is nice. We will of course be covering the update on the channel and hopefully hear more about the DLC at some point as well. There seems to be a Nintendo Direct this week according to rumors. The Elden Ring DLC is of course dropping on Friday with the review embargo being June 18th according to Tom Henderson. Yes we will be covering the DLC here on the channel and totally check out the last week's Sunday video if you missed it with more in-depth looks at all the big games that were announced at Summer Game Fest including the Xbox show. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. More Summer Game Fest content this coming week of course. Subscribe to not miss it. A like would help me out and I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.